Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to join our session. Uh, today, oh, so for, uh, first of all, I would like to say great thanks to uh, Aurelio and uh, Cordella to perform uh, this event, and we are so glad to uh, present our product uh, today. Okay, today we will uh, introduce uh, our project, Kaylee. Okay, and before that, let me do a little bit about us. Uh, my name is uh, Luke Han. I'm uh, Apache Kaylin PMC member and uh, product owner. Actually, I'm a product manager of uh, eBay GDI, Global Data Infrastructure. Yeah, uh, it's my email and uh, Twitter. And uh, my colleague, Yang Li, who is also the Apache Kaylin PMC member and uh, is our uh, tech leader and architect now. Uh, we are both coming from uh, Shanghai, China. Right. Uh, the anti killing uh, development team located in Shanghai is a very small team. And we are, we are thanks to uh, our team members' great contribution. Uh, in a very few uh, months, we are developed this uh, uh, tool, and we now make some progress. And uh, we have a chance to uh, talk to you. OK? So first, uh, I think uh, yeah, you, hear, you heard the two pronouns, killing and killing, right? So yeah, to, here is the agenda. Yeah, we will uh, cover about uh, the background and uh, some uh, feature highlights, and Yang Li will cover about our tech highlights. It's a very deep dive, and then the load map. Okay. So, yeah, what is killing? So first is uh, how to pronounce this word, right? <laughs> it's coming from uh, our uh, legend, the old story. In Chinese, we pronounce it as qi ling. So you can see, we always pronounce it as Kili. But most of you, right, the Western people, we will pronounce it as Kili. Uh, both work, right, it's fine. Okay, this is a uh, yeah, very good, uh, actually, uh, animal with a different uh, combination, right? Like uh, the jungle head, like uh, the wing from uh, Phoenix, and something else. It, it's, uh, it's a good example. In our old story, it said when it uh, appears, it means the king is kind, the country is strong, and the people is very rich and happy. Yeah, we also hope to bring this to everyone. Okay. So yeah, this is our logo. And we define it as an extreme OLAP engine for big data. That means our mission is want to deliver an open source distributed analytical engine to provide circle interface and multidimensional like OLAP. Right, on Hadoop, right now even uh, Spark, to support extremely large data sets. This is our wish mission. It's, uh, it's really hard to achieve, but uh, thanks to our customer and our partner and our team, we made a little bit of progress. Yeah, we will show that. Uh, we open sourced on October 1st last year, and uh, uh, after less than two months, we are joined uh, Apache Incubator uh, project. Yeah, now so we are under the incubating uh, project now. Okay. So this is what, but why we build it, right? So I think most of you are using uh, Hadoop technology, right? Whatever, like uh, HDFS, MapReduce, Hive, or something else. And uh, I definitely believe uh, your data, most of your data, will through like a Hive to uh, open to your user to uh, analyze, right? But I would like to do a little bit of a survey is, are your customer, I mean the analyst and the business users, they are, are they happy for the performance of their reporting and the dashboard, or even the way to analyze the data on Hadoop? Could you raise your hand? I see a little bit, very few about that, right? Because, right, with a very large data set on Hadoop, it's, it's very hard for a people to interact with that data, whatever through like Hive or Pick or something else, because most of the technology it will go to like MapReduce and will run as like a batch model. But the people do not want that. The people, your analysts want to click the button and get the result in seconds. So this is why I come up with this uh, diagram. Well, it's, uh, it's not a research, it's by just my idea, right? <laughs> your customer's happiness, it depends on <laughs> the query latency, right? And I think the 10 seconds it should be the threshold. Over that, your customer definitely will lose a patient. It actually, this is a real case from eBay. Back two years ago, uh, I have a call with a, one eBay analyst from Australia. He told me that he, when he went to the office, he submitted some queries through a hive and wait 
about like 20 or 30 minutes. Then he got the result. But he found, wow, my God, I, I forgot to put something like a filtering. He adjusted the query and submitted again, and after 20 minutes, it gathered the data. But it's an hour, one hour left, right? Even he got this exact result, he still need to find a way to pull the data back to and uh, visualization and analyze it through like Excel or Tableau and something else. Imagine that, how many works he can do one day, right? So this is uh, actually pl plus, right? If your data size is increased more and more and bigger and bigger, like the Apple said bigger than bigger, right? Your analysts will be unhappy for that, right? So in that moment, that means uh, it's in September uh, 2013, uh, we evaluated a lot of uh, different uh, uh, options through open source to uh, commercial product in eBay. The conclusion is no, of, no, no one of them can fit our business needs. So with a very a strong engineering team in Shanghai, we make a very hard decision is we will start to build an engine from scratch by ourselves, and finally we can contribute back to the open source world. So what kind of idea will pick up, right? There's a, always a different way to do, right? Like MPP way and uh, some others. We pick up a very old idea. We call it is a balance between the space and the time. Since the runtime aggregation is, a, is a very expensive, why not we cal calculate it and store somewhere, and the next time the query is coming, you do not need to scan the data, just get the result. So this is actually the idea we have, right? On the butt, you can see this is actually the real data. Like, for example, it's a, there, there are four uh, dimensions, right? All your analytics queries, it will be covered by this diagram. Each node is a different uh, combination about uh, dimensions, right? Your query always will go with like group by different uh, dimensions with several aggregation functions. We apply some field conditions, right? We can use di this diagram to cover it. But I think, yeah, this is a very old idea if you are familiar with like BI or some uh, data warehouse technology. But I think you definitely will have one question in your mind is, how about the data expansion, right? Per calculation, you mean, well, even with like a very high cardinality. I will let Jan to answer this question later, okay? So this is a very cube, we call it the OLAP cube. So yeah, we pick up this idea. And how it will work? We will ask our data to persist in Hive as a star schema, okay? Whatever coming from, right? You need to f figure out a way to persist the data there. Clean up it and persist it as a star schema. And we will define some metadata in the KDN system. Okay, once we got that uh, metadata, we will read the, uh, pull the data from Hive and generate a different, a, a sequence of MapReduce jobs. It coordinated with the Hadoop cluster to do the per calculation. And then generate the H file and store it into H base. It will be become the key value, right? And once cube ready, any uh, client can interact with Kini through NC circle with sub-second latency. Okay. I will show the performance data a little bit later. Okay, so this is uh, how Kini works, how it coordinates with the different uh, Hadoop components. Okay, so I talk about that, what it looks like. Let me uh, go to the feature highlights. First, uh, let me uh, play a little bit of video. Data has become an indispensable tool in business. It holds the key to our potential. But data isn't just like a billion bytes of information floating in space. It's also the tools that show us the patterns within. This is Apache Kyler. It is an analytical engine that allows you to interface with Hadoop using SQL. Kylin is fast, like ultra fast. It can query hundreds of billions of rows in a fraction of a second. Kylin structures data in cubes on Hadoop and is compatible with BI tools. Adapters can also be written to support Kylin's RESTful API. Kylin is open source and part of the Apache Incubator project. It is quickly receiving hundreds of stars and getting forked like crazy. Try it out and see how much time you save. 
Well, the mobile is cool, right? But we have uh, more features <laughs> than the video series, right? Yeah, there's uh, some uh, bullets, but I will not go through one by one. But I will like, see, like, we support the NC Circle. We can let users to interact to with the cluster. We also support, uh, we also leverage the edge based core processor to push a lot of the future to the uh, region server to reduce the network and the query latency. And also, we have a very strong uh, security options can support the SEL uh, at the cube or project level. And even we could uh, integrate it with the LDAP system. Like uh, uh, our internal production deployment, we also do some uh, LDAP integration. Yeah. So, this is uh, some feature. And let me show a little bit about uh, some UI. So first, uh, how to define the data model in our system? Okay, we have one component we call it the Kube Designer. It's a very lightweight web-based uh, tool. So you could define the data model to define the joint condition between the different tables. Right? It's a star schema, right? And also pick up some of uh, the dimensions, define the hierarchy, the different level about the dimension, and also the uh, aggregation functions. I mean, max, uh, count, sum, something else. And also, yeah, once the method is done, it will show up a star schema for you. Right, this is the input. This is the interface between upstream and us. Okay. And once the cube defined is ready, we have one, uh, one interface can, uh, to let user manage the job to kick off the cube build job. Right. So it's very easy to uh, build it, pick up some uh, data range, and uh, our engine will automatically generate a Diff, um, a, a sequence about steps, right? With like a hive, hive query, with like a Java call, with a bunch of uh, MapReduce jobs. Looks, yeah, looks like this, right? A different steps. Then, then our job engine will coordinate with a, a cluster to uh, run, the, run the job and do the calculation and generate something else. So our user can easily to uh, through this uh, UI to uh, dig into the log and also the job history to a deep dive about some like a performance or something issues, right? This is it. And the very important thing is we also offer a REST API through this, uh, this the job engine. That means we do not provide the schedule, scheduling feature, right? But we, will, we, all, we offer the uh, REST API. So most of the case we are using now is they will uh, call the, our, our uh, API through their ETL process. Right, through any like a uh, schedule uh, system to kick off the build job. Okay, so this is uh, how to manage your job. And once the uh, cube is ready, we also have a very lightweight uh, uh, front end can let user explore the data. So very important thing is we do not expose the cube itself to the user. We just expose the hive metadata. So our user always see this one. It's still the hive table and the column, and they can. Uh, Write some uh, NC circle and submit it to the query to, to the server, and we will get the data very fast in seconds. Okay. Also have a very lightweight uh, visualization. It's a very very uh, lightweight. We show up is how a visualization tool could interact with our server with, through our REST API. Okay. Most of our real case actually we are using BI2. Uh, for example, Tableau. We developed a, a developed an ODBC driver by ourselves from Sketch also. And it's very easy to use now for any uh, user. They do not need too much about the knowledge about Hadoop, about the driver. They, they are playing as this data through Kini, just like they are using like Oracle or MySQL. For example, pick up the ODBC driver, yeah, fulfill some uh, service, and it will show up the available tables, and pick, uh, then define the join conditions, then very important is using connect live. That mean will not in let the Tableau to pull the data from Kali to their server, right? because the data is too big. It cannot fulfill for this. So once it connect, the Tableau will submit all the circle queries to the to the Kali server, and the Kali server will return the data back very fast. And you can do any analyze, drag and drop, and visualization, and something else. Right? This is a. Uh, we have this product have. So now, I will, uh, yeah, last one, I will introduce a little bit about who are using Kelly now. Yeah, certainly eBay, right? We deploy uh, as a production system. So you could see, we have a very uh, big case, for example, the user session analyze. We are, it, it, uh, one cube contains about 28 billion loads. It generates more than 26 terabyte data, 
starting in the edge base. But you could see the query latency, 19 percentile query latency is less than five seconds. It can support our user very well. Okay. Also, we have some uh, external case like uh, Baidu. I uh, just uh, confirmed the last month they are deployed uh, already in the production system. And also like uh, Huawei, like uh, British Gas, uh, like Microsoft uh, stuff have some things. They are evaluating very actively. You could find this information through our mailing list. Okay. So now I will throw it to Yang Li for the technical heights. Thank you. That's my turn. Okay. Um, I will continue to share more about the technical details uh, behind the killing scene. So Luke have introduced that uh, our data come from Hive, and uh, it goes through the Cube Build Engine to become a Cube data and stored in Edge, edge Base. Um, when the query comes in from the top, uh, our query engine will find the best suitable Cube for the query and uh, look up data from Cube from Edge Base and serve the result. So I will talk more about uh, how we did the uh, build engine and also how, we, how the query engine works. Um, so to, to build a cube, you first need to define the uh, metadata. Um, you, f you start from the very left, which is the uh, hive star schema. And you need to map that into a cube schema, which is in the middle. That is the bottom by the uh, typically a cube modular. You have select what are the dimensions, what are the measures you want to pre-calculate. And finally, on the right, uh, there will be a edge base admin to map the cube schema to edge base layout. Um, we have the flexibility to separate, uh, for example, very, exp very heavy metrics like hyperlog log, which does the uh, distinct count, from the uh, simple uh, metrics like um, sum, max, min. So such that uh, when you're only looking at the sum max, you don't have to um, pull out the uh, hyperlog log stuff. So with that defined, uh, we go to the cube build. It basically uh, th divides into two parts, uh, also start from the left. The first step is to uh, pre-calculate the join. Um, that is done by a hive. hive uh, we submit a hive query to let Hive do the join for us, and the intermediate result will be a, a big flat table in Hive. That's a template table. From there, we do um, multiple round of MapReduce to do the aggregations. Um, it roughly will be uh, in linear with the number of dimensions you have. So if you have uh, five dimensions, it will take five rounds of MapReduce, roughly. So with every round, it will uh, ag uh, aggregate away one dimension. So uh, the first map produce will produce what we call a base cuboid, uh, a cuboid that contains all the dimensions. And the next round, it will calculate uh, four, D, four dimension cuboids, um, and so on. So every step result will be in Edge DFS, and at final, that get bulk loaded into Edge Base, become a Edge Base table. So that is the uh, cube building. Um, many will ask how you lay out the edge base row keys, and so here it is. Um, everything starts from the Hive schema, and uh, after the uh, pre-join phase, you get a um, you get a set of dimensions and a set of metrics. So that is the uh, base cuboid layout, and when you as you aggregate away dimensions one by one you come with uh, a, a subset of dimensions and uh, all the metrics. So that is the, uh, the, the, the green and the yellow boxes you're seeing. And the final layout of HBS row key is pretty simple, actually. You have the dimensions as row, as row keys and the uh, metrics as the HBS values. Um, the dimensions are uh, serialized one after another. Um, actually, they are dictionary. Uh, before they store into edge base. So the boundaries are aligned. They are fixed width for each dimension. And uh, before the uh, dimensions, you have the cuboid ID. So for every cuboid, um, all the records are, 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 are in sequence. So basically, at the query time, it will be a sequence scan. 
So how do query works? Um, we leverage a, a open source uh, project called uh, Apache Calcite to do the uh, query, uh, SQL heavy lifting. So basically that's a um, SQL um, parser and also a uh, optimizer and the execution engine. Um, so for example, if we have a query like this, that's a pretty typical query, uh, which um, we have uh, a fact table in the middle and joining three um, dimension tables. And Calcite will help us to generate an execution plan like this. Um, yeah, it's a little bit messy, but uh, if you l look uh, in detail, it's uh, actually pretty easy to understand. Let me try. Yeah, so I have um, the table joinings, right? The fact table, test key in fact, joining a calendar table, a category table, and a size table. So that will be translated into the four table scans at the bottom. And on top of that, we have a couple of joins that connect them together to become a uh, flat table, basically. And uh, on top of the join, we have filtering, projection, aggregation corresponds to uh, the where clause and group by. Finally, there's a projection and the uh, final result converter, which they call enumerator in the Kelsat term. So this is a tree of um, relational algebra, basically. And once this is uh, converted, it will execute from the top to down. So to, to generate the SQL result. Um, one interesting thing to note is that um, the last node, the, execu the last node that participates in the, in the execution is um, what we highlight with this red line. That is the top join relational node. Uh, Killing does not do actual table scans because we don't have actual tables in Kube, right? We only have the aggregate result. Um, coming from the uh, drawing the fat table. So what we have is the aggregated form of the uh, big, fat, big flat join table. So that's where we pick up from uh, in the join node. So at this point, it goes to edge base, pull out the uh, records, row keys, and values. Uh, remember, the dimensions are on the row keys, and the metrics are the values. So this translates back to a, um, a row in CloudSite, and uh, further back, it converts into the final result to a SQL query. So that's how the query works. Uh, I'd like to talk about two optimizations we've done, on, um, especially in Kidding, to, to handle the uh, big data problem we have. So we know um, Cuban has the curse of dimensionality, right? It causes data explosion, like Luke has uh, mentioned. Um, so we have to deal with this with uh, the concept of partial cube. That is, I don't have to generate a full cube, but instead I generate part of it. So let's say, uh, for example, if I have uh, 30 dimensions, to generate a full cube, that will mean I will have to calculate 2 to the 30 number of cuboids. So that is a billion. But if I do it partially, for example, I divide the 30 dimensions into three groups, 10 dimensions each, and I only calculate the combination of dimensions within each group. So that will be 3, 2 to the 10. That's 3,000, roughly. So this reduced the total calculation we have to do in killing, and this also helps to control the data explosion we've mentioned. Um, this is just one technique. We have other tools uh, in killing to do um, partial cube in different other ways. Uh, to mention a few, that is uh, the hierarchy dimension the concept, and also uh, the derived dimension concept. Um, due to the limit time, I will not introduce those here. But uh, the concept is uh, roughly the same. So you just calculate the part of the full cube, so like this. Um, the, the gray ones are not calculated. The white ones are calculated. So uh, what is the cost of partial cube? 
So that is, you have to do runtime calculations to compensate what you haven't calculated. So for example, um, if user is querying a group by, by column A and C, so this one is not calculated. What I can do best is to fall back to the closest parent, that is ACD, which is pre-calculated. Then I aggregate away the dimension D on the fly to generate this result at runtime. So basically, it's a balance between uh, the time and the space. Right? The more you calculate offline, the less you calculate online. Um, this aggregation group trick requires some knowledge of the uh, query patterns. So, uh, you have to know that in advance. Um, that's also um, a prerequisite to apply this, to apply this trick. Um, another concept to help with the uh, big data cube is what we call incremental build. So basically, you have uh, a large historic cube already, and you only want to increment build what's new um, today. So the idea is pretty simple. We separate the whole cube into what we call segments. And each segment is built independently from a range of time, say uh, one day. So every day, you only have to recalculate a daily cube segment. And as time goes, you have a lot of cube segments, which will cause your scan to uh, slow down, because you have to scan more uh, cube segments, that more scans to execute. And then uh, you have to control the number of seconds by merging them gradually. So for example, you can have a daily cube uh, that calculate every day. And on weekend, you merge the daily cubes into weekly cube. And on month end, merge into month cube, uh, and etc. So you have a control of the overall number of um, cube segments. Um, so that's what we have done uh, for the uh, multi-dimension OLAP cube, MOLAP. And uh, the following few slides, I'll talk about what we are doing next. Um, one primary limitation of the cubing technology is that it has the delay of data availability uh, for user, because build cube ha takes time. Uh, for example, uh, in our production, the biggest cube Lucas uh, introduced, if you do a full build of it, it will take 10 hours, roughly. Um, and even an incremental daily build could take uh, five to six hours, depending on your cluster availability. So our, uh, in our production, our commitment to user is uh, T plus one data availability. So that just means uh, today you can carry tomorrow, uh, yesterday's data. Um, to improve that, we are attempting in two different dimensions. So one is uh, what we're trying a new cube algorithm that aims to um, can shorten the build delay from hours to minutes. And another attempt called streaming cubing tries to further shorten the delay to seconds. And finally, we're also um, looking actively into Spark support. Um, talk more about the uh, algorithm first. So this is the current cubing algorithm. As you can see, it's uh, by layer, as I have introduced just now. So it is slow in two obvious reasons. So first, it has a lot of map reduces, uh, basically the number of dimensions you have. And uh, map reduce is slow to take off, especially if you have a big shared cluster. You often have to queue for a couple minutes to tens of minutes to get a job started. And the second reason is the size of shuffling. Uh, the current algorithm does the aggregation at the reduced side. So that means um, for, every, uh, for every cuboid, its immediate parent will emit the non-aggregated records to it. So that gets transferred over the network. And uh, then the aggregation happens at the reduced side. So if uh, we have some sample data. For example, typically, uh, the total shuffling size of a cube build will be about 100 or even 1,000 times of the total cube size. So that's a big cost. So we're trying to address it uh, 
with a new algorithm, which we uh, piloted in our environment and shows it has about 30 to 50 percent speed up. Um, the new algorithm tries to do the aggregation at the mapper side first. So the idea is I split the whole data set into uh, splits, and the mapper will take a split. With the split, it will calculate a cube segment, all cuboid combinations uh, with the given data. So every mapper will emit a cube segment that gets transferred, shuffled over the network uh, to the final reducer. There will be still some uh, shuffling and the uh, aggregation happen at the reduced side, but it is still greatly reduced. Um, so, and also this basically ideally gives us a one round uh, cube calculation. So uh, we have some data experimenting shows that the total shuffle size is now reduced to about 20 times of the total cube size. So uh, we're now uh, exit the proof of concept phase and trying to uh, materialize the algorithm and uh, move it into production quality. Uh, the expectation is the delay of cube build will be reduced from hours to minutes. And to continue in this direction, if how about we try to analyze real time data? Then you have to shorten the index process to seconds. So that is uh, what we call streaming cubing. So that is the uh, speed up attempt from another uh, angle. We try to build cube as soon as it, the data coming from the streaming. So that is, I build micro segments for every small batches coming from the streaming source. So typically it's minutes batch. And uh, there are still a few minutes data that is um, not cubed, and we'll capture that with inverted index technology. So the, re the result will be a lambda architecture, uh, simple lambda architecture like this. So you have to separate uh, the real-time data from the historic data. So let's say it's an hour. So as the data coming from streaming, it will do load into uh, both the real-time storage and the historic storage. Uh, the real-time storage will always kept the data of the last hour, and the data before the last hour is supposed to be cubed already in the uh, historic storage, that is the cubing. And when the two combine together, we have a hybrid storage interface that shield the two away from the query engine. So above the interface, it sees the whole data population. And the, the delay is up to seconds to serve real-time analysis requirement. This, this is some work we are doing right now. Uh, finally, Spark. Spark is really hot these days, so we are thinking actively to how we can support uh, killing on the uh, uh, Spark platform as well. Um, it can be done in, um, in a number of ways, right? Uh, one is to use Spark to further improve the cubing efficiency. So if uh, Spark is faster than MapReduce in general, uh, we can port our, our algorithm to Spark and it will get a speed up uh, easily, hopefully. And the second is to use Spark SQL instead of Hive to be the source of input to our cubing. And also, uh, for any query that Killing cannot do, we may route to Spark SQL to give a reasonable result to user. Um, so what SQL can't uh, Killing do right now, that is the uh, row level analysis. So, uh, Remember, Killing only has the aggregated result. So if you want to draw down into the raw records, Killing does not have that information. So that is somewhere we can fall back to Spark SQL. That's the tech highlights. Um, quickly recap uh, Killing's evolution. Uh, it started from uh, 2013, September, 
and we have a one-year proof of concept and uh, deliver the basic MOLAP feature in uh, one year. That is uh, 2014, October. Um, at that time, we go to open source. And right now, it's 2015. We're working on the streaming. And also, when the streaming combines with Cube, we should be able to analyze real-time data in sub-seconds latency. And uh, continuing the roadmap, we may add uh, further different uh, pre-aggregation functions into the system. For example, we can pre-calculate top N or histogram. We may also introduce memory store to replace edge base. So that's some uh, future wild ideas. Um, Killing ecosystem, OK. So this is actually a call for help page. Um, Killing is a very small team in Shanghai. We only have five people. And uh, we cannot deliver all the functionalities by ourselves, especially when we integrate, try to integrate with all ecosystem uh, components around us. So uh, we work actively, actively with the surrounding community to deliver um, some integration features. For example, um, we have the uh, ODBC driver integrated with Tablet done already by ourselves. But we are also uh, discussing with Trail and Spark SQL to see if um, Killing can be their backend, such that they have the uh, cubing capabilities exposed from Drill or Spark SQL interface. Um, we can also, um, about extension part backend, um, we also done, we also in, uh, thinking about how to uh, speed up the uh, query engine with Spark. I have talked about that. And we also have uh, the Docker uh, enablement with the help uh, of another company. So Killing actually has a Docker installation. Uh, you can search that on Killing's Google. It will help to uh, give you some quick deployment and uh, playground uh, to try Killing out. And also, uh, we may integrate with uh, other Hadoop control uh, interfaces, for example, uh, Embari or Hue. Now, so these are, also, these are all the areas we're looking for help. So if you are interested, uh, please help us. OK. That's all. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have time for questions? OK, we have a few minutes for a question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, over there. Um, in production, yeah. from a memory, 16, 17 around. Right. 16? Yeah, 16. Okay. About. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You're over there. The question is, uh, does uh, Killing will support MDX, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a question uh, asked a lot of time. Uh, based on our experience, at least in eBay, we, the MDX adoption is very low, right? So this is the first, uh, first answer. The second answer is, as I mentioned before, we do not expose the cube itself to the user. Right. If we want to uh, support the MDX, that means we have to expose that to the user. So currently, the, uh, we just using the uh, NC circle. That means we can build a different cube for different purpose, so that people do not need to learn something beyond the circle. Yeah. So Thanks. Yeah. Any others? Good question. Uh, we do not intend to replace anything. Okay, we are uh, we when we are developing this one, we actually are uh, facing uh, some challenge for uh, the, our existing like uh, platform inside in eBay. But we do not want to replace them because we want to focus on something uh, that others cannot do very well. But we still have some uh, some area we cannot do very well, right? So let's. Uh, 
just like the slides we call that. We would like to uh, collect, uh, collaborate a bit with the others. Right. So that we can like using the Tableau to, uh, as our presentation layer. So now we also are working with like a mesh strategy. We also want to do some integration. Matt? Yeah, we have access controls on the cubes, and also one level higher, uh, which we call project. So when you're modeling with Killing, uh, you, have, you create a project which contains a number of tables, and with the table, you create cubes. And you can have access control on the project level or on the cube level to specify, yeah. No, right no. now it's just on the cube level. Yeah. So your question is actually very great. It's a very great question. We, since we are using a per calculation system, so it's very hard, right, to uh, using like this uh, cell level uh, security control, right? So this is a, but the workaround for us is you can build a different cube with a different uh, measure and uh, dimensions, even like uh, the uh, filtering. Then set up the SEL on that uh, cube. Right, it, it, it can work. This is why we do not want to expose the cube itself to the user, because the user still can use the same query to us. Right. The second question, there is a company called SK. Uh, <laughs> yes. I wonder how you differentiate your solution. Well, if, even if you uh, mentioned that, there's actually a lot of other options, like uh, Teradata or something else. But mm. the answer for you is some, uh, once, uh, yeah, someone announced that some like a commercial support, a commercial product, mm. just the last month I remember. Someone uh, quoted, uh, uh, quoted us on Twitter, said that's why Apache Kaling is so important. Because it's open source, right? Right, I think <laughs> the, the difference is open source. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, technology-wise, we don't know the details because at scale didn't share a lot uh, from their homepage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The explosion rate. Yeah. Um, in our production, of course, you need to modeling carefully, right? Uh, our explosion rate is around six times to ten times, and we try our best to control that. Um, by the way, this is the final result. Uh, as a starting point, uh, before, uh, like I mentioned, there are tools, right? There are uh, dimension, uh, hierarchy dimensions, derived dimensions, and uh, aggregation groups. You have to. Uh, at the beginning, you don't know how to optimize these without, with limited knowledge of requirement. Because when you the first come to you, they will say, mm, I will query in all possibilities. <laughs> Typical, that's the answer. Um, you can start by some uh, slow performing cube first. And as the requirement, requirement becomes clearer, as the user project moves on, you will have, uh, I, you'll be able to identify patterns of the query. And then you optimize the cube settings. Uh, accordingly, and the final result is six to ten times expansion. Okay, one more question. Yeah. Uh, I have to, do I have to pick one? <laughs> okay. uh, you make a let's decision. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, the first one would be, uh, do you have uh, any plan to try and uh, create cubes or suggest which cubes to create automatically from the workload? That would be one. I know it's a bit of a challenge, but and the second one would be uh, the choice of each base for the cube compared to something like, I don't know, Impala on Parquet. Uh, what is the rationale behind that? And if okay. you're planning to change it. Thank okay, you. I think we can answer one by one. Okay, yeah. let me answer the first question. Okay. First question is about uh, Sorry, it's about a... <laughs> it's, uh, let's say you, you have a workload. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, actually, at the very beginning, we actually put something like uh, we want to collect all the, like, uh, queries in the log. And uh, we, we, are, we have the idea of saying, hey, if, can we do some, like, machine learning to uh, come up with something like uh, uh, that told us, hey, hey this, this is your hot data. You, sh you could uh, build the 
the, the cube, even like the automatic builder. But it looks like a too, too far, right? It's a too smart, it's like something like AI did, right? So actually, uh, we do not have so much about like this way, right? Most of the case actually we are using in the production is we are working with our, our, our customer and partner very closely. They know the business needs, they know the query patterns, they know the something, the priority, so they could help them to build that suite and optimize that cube. Okay? Yeah. Okay, about the choice of attributes. Well, um, there are many reasons, but I think two is, there are two factors that is most important. First, we try to minimize the dependency. Um, killing folks on cubing, uh, it need a big storage. It need a reliable, scalable, um, some storage. Um, for, for, for to store the cube data. And uh, Hadoop is a very good fit. Uh, at the time, we not analyzed the uh, surrounding environment. Um, so that is one reason. The other reason is um, HBase at that time is the closest, easiest tool we have. So that gives us the grab of uh, time and speed to have something delivered to our user. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah, if you have uh, uh, any other question, please send an email to our DevMe list, or you can come to us after this session. Thank you very much. Thank you.